Ladies and gentlemen, there are many people concerned about the evictions that's looming in America, and it is going to be massive. And it's going to be another epidemic in America if nothing is done. There are many states that have decided to move forward with evictions, and they know what the circumstances are out here for people. You know, folks aren't working. There's a pandemic going on. And now you got unemployment minus the extra, extra $600 that people were getting before. So they are fully aware of this, but don't seem to care. And they are moving forward on these evictions, which I think is completely outrageous and it should be stopped. But unfortunately, you have a Senate and a Congress in this country that can't agree on nothing. But in the meantime, it is the American people that are the ones suffering. You know, sometimes these it's not good to have these longtime politicians in there. You know, these folks are wealthy. They are completely unaffected by what's going on out here. But they are the ones making decisions for everybody else, which I think is outrageous. But this is the way America decided to set up their two-party system. Wow. But let me go ahead and play this video from ABC News. Many on the East Coast are preparing for the imminent threat of a hurricane barreling in their direction, worried about the current threat of economic uncertainty. Many lawmakers have already gone home for the weekend, while some of their constituents suffer reeling from the effects of this pandemic. Congress and the White House do not appear any closer to a deal. In fact, Republicans don't even agree with each other about just how to move forward. They did offer to extend those $600 payments for one week, but Democrats refused to accept it after putting up their own plan months ago. Caught in the middle of this stalemate, roughly 20 million Americans facing possible evictions with the end of the month now upon us. Our Clayton Sandell leads us off with the victims of Washington's inaction. It's just a panic all the time. That's all I am. Costly and said panic. Lynette Hale wouldn't mind taking a time machine back to about seven months ago when life was pretty good. We were going out and eating. I could buy supper for all six of us. Uh, we would go to movies. We'd, you know, I could go buy groceries. Uh, just enjoying life. Hale ran a daycare business out of a house she rents in Aurora, Colorado. I had toys up here. I got packing plays upstairs in a, in a bedroom up there. And we played down here and uh, had little tables set up in there that we ate lunch. But then came COVID got emails from all my parents one right after another almost it was just traumatizing because one email says that they will no longer be using me and then I got the next one and then the next one and then I just sat there because they were all gone her income gone Hale used her savings to pay rent about twenty two hundred dollars a month but by July she was tapped out and now the landlord wants her out 30-day demand for rent or uh, possession. And somebody put this on your door? Yes. She won't make August rent either. I'm 70 years old and I'm about to be on the street. What are you going to do? Do you have a place to go? I am looking at a uh, one-bedroom apartment, but still I have to have money to pay the rent. Hale is one of millions of Americans who are part of a growing wave of evictions that experts warn is about to come crashing down. The United States is facing the most severe housing crisis our country has ever seen. Approximately 30 to 40 million children and adults are facing eviction right now. To put this in perspective, in the entire year of 2016, 3.6 million evictions were filed. So in the truncated time period of just a few months, the United States is looking at three to four times that level. When the pandemic began, state and federal governments tried to soften the blow, pausing evictions and adding $600 a week to unemployment checks. But those lifelines are now expiring at midnight and evictions are again ramping up, hitting the poor and people of color the hardest. 
communities of color at extremely high risks of eviction, even before the pandemic, but especially now. In one survey, almost 75% of Black and Hispanic renters had no cushion to cover three months of expenses. One of the other outcomes of eviction is that it it results in voter suppression, that it is extremely challenging to participate in the vote and to participate in elections and in democracy when you are worried about keeping a roof over your head, where you're transitioning, where you have to change your address and other factors. Tigist Casa is a single mom with three kids living in Washington, D.C. Her unemployment checks aren't enough to cover the rent. We are worried because we cannot afford to pay rent. We have kids, my neighbor, they're not working, I'm not working. Casa attended a recent cancel the rent rally. We are fighting for our neighbor, for our community. Cancel the rent. Cancel the rent. Similar events are now popping up across the country, calling for rent forgiveness and a halt on evictions, which can have devastating long term impacts. It affects your credit. It affects your ability to buy a home. It's also linked to numerous health ailments, including depression, suicidal ideation, suicide, respiratory distress that, as we know, in COVID-19 could increase risk of mortality and complications with numerous negative health outcomes. And it's particularly traumatizing for children who are set back academically. To try and help, Denver attorney Zach Newman co-founded the COVID-19 Eviction Defense Project, a team of lawyers offering free legal advice. I was on Facebook in late March, got on, people are posting about not being able to pay their rent. So threw a message up, said, if anyone's having trouble paying your rent, drop me a line. I'm happy to represent you in court or help you. Didn't get on for 24 hours, got back on the next day and had 500 messages. Newman says his team has so far helped about a thousand clients navigate a complicated web of laws, court battles, and impatient landlords. I don't think landlords are the bad guy in this story at all. Landlords are running businesses. They're trying to pay mortgages. Terry Schof is one of those landlords. It's a 26, about 2,600 square foot home, four bedrooms. She says when the pandemic hit, one of her tenants lost a job and stopped paying rent. They finally moved out, but she says she's now in the hole at least 10 grand. Her credit cards are maxed. She worries she might lose her own home. I'm not a big corporation. I'm a single person, you know, living on Social Security with the rental income to supplement. So people in my position, the mom and pop landlords, are really hurting. Making it worse, Congress is at an impasse. Both sides support a new round of stimulus checks, but disagree on unemployment insurance. Democrats want $600 a week. The Republican plan cuts it to 200 or two-thirds of lost wages, whichever is greater. Democrats are proposing $100 billion in rent relief and a one-year eviction moratorium. Republicans have not offered their own proposal on that, but President Trump suggests it should be on the table. You want to work on the eviction? I think relief is coming. The question for a lot of tenants is, will it come in time or will the eviction happen before the money arrives in their bank account? Lynette Hale is now relying on food stamps. I'm able to get to the store when my kids can take me and okay. get some food in here, but I don't eat much anyway. Watching the clock tick down. What keeps you going? At this point, I don't know. Because it's on my mind all the time not to. So I don't know why. Just maybe something good will happen, but I don't know how much longer I can carry that on either. Hoping someone comes up with a plan to help save her and millions of others. Clayton Sandell, ABC News, Aurora, Colorado. Well, ladies and gentlemen, these people are in the same boat with a lot of folks, unfortunately. You know, it's a lot of people. And to me, when you have people in dire situations, even if you didn't want to pass the entire bill, they should have done something for unemployment and these evictions. There is no way... They should be moving forward on foreclosures, evictions, and some type of remedy because unemployment is just simply not enough. People cannot even pay their mortgage or their rent. 
on the low amount that you get for unemployment in this country. It's not enough. And I just can't believe they are squabbling over $600. They act like 600 is all the money in the world. It really is not that much money. It really isn't. Y'all, I was making more than 600 a week back in the late 80s or early 90s, okay? So it's not that much money at all. They're making a big deal. And it, it, it is just such a joke that they're making a big deal out of that money. It really is. But y'all, please tell me what you think. This is about to get worse in America. So like I said, the protest in this country I see are going to become more massive and more violent as time move on and people realize they cannot survive in this country. And you see the politicians you have been voting in all this time really, truly do not care about you. And I don't believe there should be career politicians anyway, because they take on the attitude of they just can't be touched. They're invincible. Whatever decision they make, you just going to have to live with it. And that's all wrong. They technically are supposed to work for the people, but many of them are very indifferent and act like we're at their mercy and it should not be that way at all. But y'all, please tell me what you think about all of the evictions that are occurring across the country. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.